Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to enhance a little bit of that two-column layout page I just did. So, um, got a basic two-column layout with a header. This is a fixed-width layout. I can easily make it a flexible layout. I'll do that back. I'll do that in a second. But I want to add a footer section down here. So, I've got a top section, I've got a left section, and I've got a main section. Let's jump over to the HTML first. Um, there it is. So here we go, I've got my top bar section, my left bar section, my main bar section. Now there's a couple ways you can go about adding a footer. For instance, I could jump right down here, and by the way, there is a footer tag, you know, I could just do footer. And I, of course, I'd probably give this a unique ID, even though it's kind of unique in, in its name and do that. Uh, I'm going to keep using the section tag though. I explained in my last video I wanted to be very consistent and just use all the new section tag even though there are header tags and footer tags and things like that. So I'm just going to stick with the section tag. So instead of using a footer tag I'm going to put in section ID equals footer in a closing section. Okay and this is my footer. So I'm going to do this once here and it's going to cause a few little problems that are annoying and then I want to talk to you about how you can go about fixing. It's a really easy fix though. So now I've got this footer section but I have to account for it in my style. So let me jump up here, copy, make another style rule. This is going to be my footer section and background color I'll do a purple. And for height I'm going to make these a little bit smaller. I'm going to do a 80 pixel height for my footer. I'm going to change my top bar height to 80 pixels and I'm doing this so it'll fit better on my screen when you want to see it here. And I'll change the height of my left bar and my main bar to 200 pixels. I mentioned at the end of my last video that using the height for the left bar and height for the main bar is not something you probably do in real life. I'm doing it here just for visual aid. Okay, so I've made a few changes there. Back to my browser and let me uh, go ahead and refresh fantastic so now I've got my uh, left section main section I've got my two column layout with a header and a footer and you could be thinking well Ralph that was a piece of cake what the hell's the big deal right well here's the big deal because I'm setting these heights of my two columns here you get a very unrealistic you get a false sense of easiness so in real life though those columns are never the same height because the content of the containers is what indicates the height. So let me do something here. I'm going to go to my uh, left bar and instead of 200 high, I'll make it 240 high. 240 pixels. Go back here, refresh, ugh, and see now you're getting some weirdness. Okay, So now my footer's kind of wrapping around that one. That's kind of weird to look at. What if instead of it this left bar, what if my main bar was 240 tall? Okay, now we get this kind of weird looking gap here. This isn't too bad, okay? So I've got a number of problems. Now to solve this problem here where my main section starts to wrap underneath my left column, because remember my left section here is floating to the left, here's a fix for that. I go to my main bar and I'm going to set a width, I'm sorry, I'm going to set a margin left on my main bar equivalent to the width of the thing that it's wrapping around, in this case the left bar. Okay, so check this out. I'm going to go to my main bar. I'm going to put margin left 180 pixels. And I'm doing margin left 180 because my left column is 180 wide. And when I save that, go to my browser and refresh, there we go. Now we can see that it's um, staying on its own side, so to speak. In this case, my footer is staying at the bottom, but it's still kind of risky because maybe that left section is going to be longer. So here's the fix to ensure that that footer is going to stay at the bottom here. I'm going to jump back over to my HTML and I'm going to put another, I'm going to put a div around my left bar and my main bar. So check this out. I'll do an opening div right there and a closing div right here. Okay, so just I'll indent these just a little bit so you can kind of see. There we go. So now my left bar and my main bar are inside of their own div. Div is a block element, and block elements will take up the full width available to them, and block elements also separate themselves from surrounding content. This will ensure that my footer is always below or beneath 
these two elements together since they're grouped together. Really easy fix, huh? There we go. So now I've got these two key sections in that div. I'm going to scroll up to my styles here and do a couple things. Um, let's see. I will go to my footer. And I'm also going to put in a break property. I'm sorry, a clear property. So I'm going to clear both. Basically, the clear property will prevent an element from wrapping around a previously floating object. So I'm just going to do a clear both. I'll go ahead and hit save. And we're not going to notice much difference here because my main section is taller. But if I go and make my left section taller, my left bar, I'll do a height of 240 on the left bar. And I'll do a 190 on the main bar. Save that. Go to browser. Refresh. And let's see if you can see this here. I must have done a really big number here. Yep, I did 1900. Let me make that a little smaller so it all fits. There we go. So now we can see that my footer is staying beneath everything. So that's a, that's a pretty quick and easy way to get a footer on there. So I've got a two column layout with a header and a footer. Now you might be irritated by this weird spacing here. So, oh, I don't like that. Well, you gotta remember a lot of this is the problems are exaggerated here because I'm using um, uh, all, all these wacky colors to indicate where my sections are. In real life, you're probably not going to be doing that kind of thing. But there are some common tricks in order to prevent this from happening. Let's say you do want a bunch of different colors for your, for your various sections. A really common tool is to use background images in order to mask what's going on here. So kind of imagine for a moment that, um, let's say, I regularly have this main section coming up a little short, so to speak, then what I would do is I'd put a background color on my container similar to my main section background color. So if I go to my container and I do a background color of 090, which is that green that I used, and refresh this. There we go. Now it looks like it's all filled in, even though the main section te technically stops somewhere around here. So that's one little trick to use. The other thing would be to make a background image. So a lot of uh, websites that certainly use fixed width layouts would use this, where they could make a thin little background image in Photoshop or something. The image might be just be two pixels tall, and it would be 960 pixels wide. Why 960? Because my container, oops, 760. So they'd make it like 760 wide in my example. So they do 760 wide, two pixels tall image, and the left 180 pixels would be this shade of blue, and the right 180 pixels would be this shade of green, or the right uh, remaining pixels would be this shade of green, and they would just repeat this downward, and that would stretch out the appearance of columns no matter which one is shorter. But otherwise, you're in pretty good shape here. So we've got two column layout, header, and footer. And let me just go back to making this flexible. I can go to my container, take the width out, and for margin I'll do top and bottom zero, and for left and right, how about if I do 25 pixels on the left and the right? Refresh, there we go. So now I've got a flexible web page layout with a little bit of margin space on the left and the right. Two column layouts are easy.